The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look at the German DAX like we always do. It's what we call the rocket syndrome, up, up, and away. If we take a look here at the FTSE, you'll notice it looks like that Boris Johnson, I guess, is going to be, uh, I think that's his name, will be the next prime minister. It's also looking very, very bullish. So keep that in mind. Okay, Billy Ray Valentine is going to change the protocol today. We are going to be talking a little bit about the Treasury bonds and Treasury notes. Here is the open interest from two days ago. I want to get this up and show you. Folks, this will be the last time that I will be, yes, do that. It hit that Fibonacci number, and it's up five handles in the crude oil. Let's take a look here at this. This is where we were on uh, Tuesday. You'll notice we had a big drop in open interest of 38,493. That's when the uh, European Central Banks came out. You'll notice that the volume between where we were on June 18th and where we were on May 28th, a whole lot different. I pointed that out yesterday. I don't want to spend a lot of time doing that. I just want to go over this to let you folks know. Now, if you go into last night, what happened? We'll take a quick look here. And then we're going to just chat about it for just a tiny bit here. Hold on just a minute, buckaroos. And here it is from yesterday. And this is with a, um, you know, a little bit of kick in the pants from the Federal Reserve. And you had a 60,000 contract drop in open interest with the market going straight up. Well, it's different this time, boys and girls, because the old things that used to run the old commodity markets, they don't work anymore because here's what the old books used to say many, many years ago. And I'll get this up and take a look at it. You'll be able to see here that if you have a rising price like we had in Treasury notes and a drop in open interest like we had in Treasury notes and bonds, the market is weakening. Now, how could that possibly be? Boys and girls, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange at 145 West Jackson Avenue in Chicago, Illinois, is based on a contract. For every buyer, there must be a seller. They must match up. Otherwise, there's no trade. Remember when Bitcoin came out at 19000 in January of 18? Guess what happened? There were no buyers up there. It was all sellers. Look what happened. Bada bing, bada boom. It just kept dropping and dropping and dropping. Now, I don't know when this is going to be over, but unless it's really, truly different this time, something is different. This market is going up on a drop, and it'll probably drop again today with that big explosive thing that we had last night. Last night's volume is so doggone small, probably don't make a lot of difference, but who knows. But anyway, watch this, folks. We've seen this happen over and over again. If we can't learn from it, and, you know, maybe it is this time, and, you know, like the old, I think it was uh, Abraham Lincoln said, it is better to keep your mouth shut and thought a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. So that's one of the things that we have to uh, remember. But I have to tell you one of my favorite stories. Those of you that have been to visit me in Tucson know that I have a huge library of uh, books on psychology and positive thinking. And one of my favorite books is by the great Japanese uh, warrior Miyamoto Mususashi. He wrote the Book of the Five Rings. And some of the things that are in that book are just right out of the uh, Lao Tso's, uh, Lao Tse's uh, Art of War, like uh, today is victory over yourself. Tomorrow is victory over your lesser man. And Lao Tse said, uh, if you conquer your enemy, you are strong. If you conquer yourself, you're omnipotent. So that's mainly what you're looking at. But Mio Mosho Shuzi said, the general speaking, the way of the warrior is a resolute acceptance of death. And that reminds me of one of my favorite movies with uh, Mel Gibson. And it says, a coward dies a thousand times. The brave man dies but once. 
So just keep those things in mind as you go through your trading day. But I want to tell you the story. Miyamoto Masashashi was in a beautiful picnic area in Japan some 2,000 years ago. And uh, there was a giant horse fly bothering everybody. And so the great warrior took out his sword and the fly came down and was taunting him. And he took a swish at the, at the fly and the fly laughed at him and he said, ha ha, the great master has missed him as he put his sword back into his sheath and the great master bowed his head and looked at the fly and said don't shake your head that's what's happening in the treasury bond and treasury no boys and girls but nobody sees it and that's the big problem because one of the quotes that Musa Shashi talked about was perceive that which cannot be seen with the eye and I am the blind man remember in the in the man in the land of uh in the land of the bland, uh, the la <laughs> the, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Well, I'm going to be uh, say one more quote from Harry Callahan, Inspector, San Francisco Police Department. Know your limitations, and now I'll get on to some of the markets. Okay, let's take a look here at uh, a few of these things that I want to talk about. Um, one of the things that uh, um, about being a trader and, you know, losing and stuff like that. I want to post this one because this is my favorite quote by, um, um, I'm in quotes today, folks. You know, I've got lots of quote books, so this is what I'm going to try to do, make it a little different. Let's take a look here. Marshall, you're the only one that likes me and laughs, but I appreciate it. Now, you'll notice it. This is uh, from, from October 1941. Uh, Winston Churchill will say, uh, he said, never give up, never, never give up. The actual quote was, never give in, never, 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 in nothing great or small, large or petty, never give in except to convictions of honor and good sense. This is when right in the midst of the really bad fighting between uh, Germany and, um, and uh, uh, the U.K., Okay, so if it weren't for Winston Churchill, everybody over there would be speaking German anyway. Okay, let's take a quick look about the, the market that is rocking and rolling. By the way, we talk about open interest, right, boys and girls? Let's just remember, we talk. I have posted this chart and one other one just like it every single day for the last week or more. This is when we look at that big area between 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019. And I said, if we get above 1365 in the gold, it's going to be running like a stripe of deer. And that's exactly what it's did, folks. I mean, it's just been it's just been a, a big move. I mean, there's nothing you can else you hear. It. Look at this, folks, on the monthly chart going back. Let's just go back a long ways here and just take a quick look at it. There, look at this, look at this. It hit it one, two, three, four times, and now we have popped above it. Folks, look at the correction that we had between 2005, the low was actually $230 an ounce in, in 02, because I remember Tom O'Brien buying that down there at that point. And then you know the high we made back here, you'll see at uh, 1932 per ounce, that was in August of 2011, folks, open when interest was dropping like crazy. I was in Hong Kong at that time, and I was telling people that this is not the time to be buying the gold because the people had left the restaurant. There was no more food, and that's what the problem is here. Now, now we've broken out here. Now, what do you think happened to the gold market? We're going to have a little test here today. When we get back, 877-927-6648. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I uh, asked the question before, what happened to open interest in gold on this uh, breakout? Not the breakout last night, but the, the market that we had last uh, yesterday when we had a big, big jump after the Federal Reserve. We got up to 13, uh, but, 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 uh, 1360 and change. We hadn't taken out the big highs yet. That was done after the market closed. Folks, there was a huge increase in open interest in gold yesterday. Not in silver. Nope, not in platinum. They were flat. Big interest in open interest in gold, 2%. Now, to put that in perspective for just a second, and that is 2%, if we had a 2% increase in the Treasury notes, the largest of all contracts traded at Chicago Mercantile Exchange, almost 4 million, that would have been 80,000 contract increase. But did we get that on that breakout? No, we did not. We got it at minus 61,000. Folks, the people are not coming into that restaurant right now. They've got their bibs on. They're not spilling anything, but boy, be careful. Now, maybe it is all different this time, and maybe after all these years of looking at these markets, you know, I finally breached my limitations, as Harry Callahan would have said. But frankly, I got to bring to the dance the song that brought me here, and that's the one it is. These are contracts, folks. For every buyer, they've got to be a seller. I don't care whether it's the Federal Reserve or who it is. Somebody's got to be in there buying those, and somebody's not buying them. They're covering shorts, but they're not adding. Now, if we come in tomorrow and we have a big increase in open interest, I'm not eating any more crow because I'm out of that market. I gave it one little shot up there at a very, very small amount, and when it didn't work, I moved on to the next words. Uh, David, I love this. Thank David White is going to be our guest here at the half hour to talk to us about this new uh, 
in an IPO that's coming out. That one of my favorite quotes from Sir John Templeton, the most dangerous words in investing are, it's different this time. Yes, uh, I have to agree with that. One of my favorite books, and I, I mean that with great sincerity, is a book by Bernard Baruch called My Own Story. It's autobiography, and uh, he was interviewing uh, Fanny Bryce, the great actress at the time, she was equivalent to uh, Elizabeth Taylor, and she said to him, "You know, Mr. Baruch, you know, how do I how do I make money?" And she he says, "Well, you buy low and you sell high." And she said, "That sounds simple enough. How do I do that?" He said, "Do you have about 40 years that you could spend with me?" And that's it. And then she said, "What's the stock market all about, Mr. Baruch?" And Baruch said, "The greatest scam in the stock market is really quite simple. We inflate prices to the highest possible price, and..." We get suckers to buy it all the way down, and that might be true. I don't know, but those are some of the quotes of that book that I, that I really, really enjoy. Folks, one of my very, very dear friends and one of the best traders that I ever met was um, uh, Tom Hugard. He's in the same class as uh, uh, Frank Tauscher, and uh, you know, gosh darn. And I tell you, he's just really good. Anyway, uh, his his method of trading is based on volatility. In other words, when that move happened in gold yesterday, you know, as it broke out to the upside, he just kept buying, buying, and buying, and it just kept going. And then bada bing, bada boom, you know, there you were. By the way, we had a terrific show yesterday with Shane Smolian on the air, and uh, he poise some really great stuff to say, you know, get ready because the Fed's really getting ready to pump this puppy. And I think that pumping the puppy is uh, what we've seen. Big, big increases in uh, uh, Fed juice. And uh, looks what's happened. It's had a heck of a run here. And he's saying it could be very times. It's, uh, it says, Larry, every time I think I've heard all your stories, you tell me new. Terry, I just make them up, buddy. You know, none of this stuff is true. It's all fake news. Well, that stuff about Baruch was and the, stuck, the stuff about the open interest was. But, uh, you know, my grandma used to tell me once when she was feeding me oatmeal, learning me how to trade when I was there in four and five years old, she says, just remember, if you tell the truth at 10, you won't have to remember what you said at two. So I've tried to go by that most of my life. But uh, I do have a tendency to embellish the uh, – uh, some <laughs> some of the stories that I tell, but that's just that's just me. The overall part of it is still pretty. pretty. Yes, we're going to have Shane on again. He, everybody just absolutely it blew everybody away. But boy, you talk about somebody that does so much. We'll be able to see. Now, Shane just skyped me just a second ago, telling me that gold looks uh, higher until tomorrow. So we'll see what's happened. We got up to thirteen ninety. Uh, seven last night, folks. There's a big um, 1.618 up there, at, uh, right around 1,400. But boy, this thing looks good. And with that big, big increase in open interest of 2%, at well over 10,000 contracts, and that was before, that was before they broke out last night. They didn't break out last night until around nine o'clock. Um, uh, New York time. Well, it's maybe a little late. Maybe at 7:30, 8 o'clock New York time. It had already started, you know, popping up pretty good. So uh, that was another reason to see. And so far, it's had a $20 correction already, folks. You know, it's just been uh, very, very good. Yes, I appreciate the positive comments about Shane because, folks, I always believed that sometime on my bucket list there's going to be something from the uh, CNBC and Bloomberg about the financial cycles. It'll come from somebody like Shane, who has a, you know, is a physicist and stuff, but you know, or you know, MIT and DE Shaw or Renaissance, somebody like that will come out and say, well, we, you know, <laughs> one of the biggest of all is uh, uh, Dr. Andrew Lowe, he's already wrote a book about, you know, the, the evolution of technical analysis. The first 50 pages, he attributed to the first technicians were astrologers. And, uh, you know, they use mercury and all that other stuff. So I don't know. That's all I can tell you. All I know, it was sure, it was sure interesting to watch that last night because you talk about a different approach to what the markets are doing and how the Fed comes in and does these things. It's, it's really, hey, this is the plunge protection team in in uh, in living technicolor, boys and girls, that's exactly what it is. So, anyway, that's what we're we're keeping a close eye on. I want to. Uh, we're going to have uh, David back on. Uh, yeah, can I get Dr. Lowe as a guest? I can't 
name, get him on the telephone. I spoke to him once. Uh, he bought a couple of the astrology books, and uh, he asked me, you know, one of the programs that I was using, which was Alfie Lavoie. But uh, he's a really nice guy. He's just extremely busy. He must have 50 assistants. All of the books that he writes are basically co-authored by these uh, assistants. And I, you know, but he's he has a three billion dollar hedge fund that gives all the profits to cancer research for women, and it does extremely well. He's one of the most uh, reputable people on Wall Street, and most of the quants come right out of MIT from Dr. Lowe's um, financial engineering group, where he has a chair, uh, probably right next to uh, Basil's chair there at uh, MIT there in Boston. And if anybody deserves one, it would be Basil. Uh, I wanted to show you one of the one of uh, Tom Hugard's friends that uh, just did a, uh, a this is an actual statement, folks. I happened to uh, take a look at this. I was asked to take a look at it, but this is an actual uh, PNS statement. And you notice that the person put a balance in of seven thousand dollars. You can see the profit on the account was one hundred and thirty five thousand. Those are pounds, folks not dollars, and he took out uh, almost 16,000 pounds with 100, 126,000. This was three days ago, um, and this now one is, uh, he's up uh, well above 200K uh, in pounds, and so, and the way they do it, and I, I'm going to, I'm going to try to, you know, to do a seminar. They, they offered to tell me, and they did, I mean, because Tom was one of my dear friends. He said, I'll show you exactly what we're doing. He said, I have no problem, and I, I said, I know why, and I, he said, yeah, well, whatever. 877-927. Stay tuned for David White. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the markets opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed 
designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're going to have on our guest now is David White, Mr. Google himself. David, how are you? I'm doing fantastic this morning. Had a couple I really of things I wanted to talk about. And the first one is an IPO, which is not really an IPO going out today, which is Slack. I've been talking about it for a while. Uh, if uh, anybody in the den uses, uh, well, they have to use Hotcom uh, to talk. It's kind of a version of Hotcom for hardware and software developers and people that uh, uh, create things. Uh, we'll say that you wanted to build a plane and you wanted to get all the different people uh, from the engine department uh, and the jet engines to the people that make the skin of the aluminum uh, or programmers uh, that are writing a lot of different parts of a, of a bigger program together. It is a great way to collaborate uh, with different rooms. And it, it's kind of a little different. Uh, Hotcom uh, was designed for stock traders. Uh, this is more designed for people that are uh, creating or building or uh, manufacturing something to the point of getting it uh, to the manufacturing line, the development of it all. Uh, and it's more like Lego where you have different things you can plug into it instead of one size fits all. A lot of different pro uh, companies write different kind of plugins for them to use it. I I've used it for a long time. I've sung its praises. Uh, we use it on the back end uh, for me to talk to uh, the uh, producer at uh, TFNN headquarters. Uh, so it, it's something I've used for a long time. In fact, I ran a big room in it for machine learning for uh, a, uh, a version of machine learning for Microsoft until they uh, decided that they wanted to create their own room <laughs> and wipe me out by taking out all the... Uh, people from the company and moving them over <laughs> there. But uh, it, it's quite a very nice program, but it's not an IPO in the traditional sense. This is called a direct public offering. And a lot of people won't know the difference, but a DPO is taking all the shares that you have as your private and just saying, today I'm public. Uh, there's no underwriting by all the Wall Street folks. Uh, there's no uh, supporting your stock with uh, bogus upgrades and uh, huge amounts of hype uh, because, of course, they have the people on the street are going to have shares that they get. In fact, a lot of times uh, this is about $16 billion uh, that will uh, exchange hands today. But part of that is normally in an IPO uh, that you can't sell for 180 days or a year. There's some kind of lockup period. Well, there's no lockup period. And if uh, the street wants to sh short every single share today, they can. So it's kind of a, a much different kind of thing going out the door. And lastly, for this company, it is much like uh, Facebook, in that it doesn't matter if uh, the executives of the company go out on a murderous uh, killing spree, you can't remove them. There is absolutely, you have zero rights as a shareholder. The only thing you can do is short it or dump it. So it, it makes me think a lot of uh, rather risky IPOs around the dot com phrase and also. The biggest competitor is Microsoft with a thing called Teams that does something very, very, very similar. So I just thought everybody should know about it because today uh, the uh, 
that we've got Jim Cramer out there pumping it. So we know that we're going to have probably the people that are uh, less able to take rather large swings uh, playing in the uh, pond today. Uh, the symbol on this is going to be work, W-O-R-K. David, uh, I, Wall Street yeah. must not like that. Well, I mean, it, it will probably cost them $2.5 billion because they no. don't get a dime out of this going public. Wow. So you always wonder whether or not they're going to stream it or give it bad press. Um, there's enough worry to go around, but uh, at $26 a share, which is the way they're saying this thing's going to go out this morning, it's worth $16 billion. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, the things I hate about a lot of new IPOs are that you, uh, if the, if the, you know, if you get into a bad situation on it, there's literally no way to run the management out of the company. Same thing with uh, Facebook. Uh, we could find out he was a trader selling uh, all our secrets to Mao, and literally it would take two years to go through the court to get him removed as an executive if uh, he was literally in jail. So, wow. the, you know, the, a lot of these things you just want to be very wary of. Uh, but to me, yeah, I think we're going to get a, a very interesting a view of the market and how much euphoria there is on this bounce this morning. Because, again, you can short this at will. It, the insiders can sell all the shares today if they want. Uh, and the question is, what is everybody going to do? But I think it's going to be kind of a window into what's going on in the markets. Wow. Google. I, yeah, have, so, they, have they ever done this before? There was one that was kind of like this, and that was Spotify, the music streaming site. Oh, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. I, but, I they had one of the but they had a – they only put out about 10 percent of the shares. Everything mm -hmm. in this one is open. There's, there's going to be $16 billion tradable in the float at $26 billion, uh, mm -hmm. market cap. So like I said, this one's kind of uh, – Spotify was, was one that they put out there with just a few amount of shares. In the float, but this one apparently uh, going to go whole hog the first day. So watch for fireworks in this one. I would imagine that the financial infotainment cable stations are going to be talking about this uh, left and right. I did want to get into one other thing um, that since you spent so much time in Hong Kong was these new laws uh, from China where they can extradite anybody they want. And I didn't know if you'd heard much about it or the people that you know over there are talking about it. Um, but uh, it certainly looks like China's putting its thumb on Hong Kong. And I didn't know if you had mm -hmm. anything to say about that. I know uh, Sarah's watching it quite a bit because it's, you know, a lot of people out there, there's, they say two million, but it's closer to half a million. But half a million people in that small little area, you know, that's a lot of people. They block all the, the freeways and, you know, the traffic there is not the – you know, not the greatest anyway, so it is kind of tough, but uh, I don't know much about it. But, you know, I I think those folks over there better be careful because, you know, China carries a big stick over there. And they could shut that down in a heartbeat. All they could do is a couple of, you know, big ships right in front of the, you know, the South China Sea there where the channel comes in in Hong Kong's history, you know. But they're not going to do that because, you know, they got all their money. That's how they take their money out of the country is my guess, but, you know. I, hey, you know, David, one thing I know for sure, I'm the last person that anybody tells before any of this stuff comes up. That much I'm sure of. <laughs> well, that's good. Anyway, I just wanted everybody to know about this DPO. And if you're playing it today, yeah. just be very careful because we're, when Kramer we're starts have, talking, you know the rubes yeah, yeah. are going to be around. Yeah. We're going to have you back on next week to see how this thing's trading. How's that? That sounds good, Larry. Have a good day. Okay. The symbol is WRK. We'll be right back, folks. 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. 
A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, folks. It wouldn't be right unless we talked a little bit about the euro, folks. It's held up relatively well here. Uh, we'll bring this up here. You can see that we did hold that 61% uh, retracement level. Uh, let's see. Someone, someone, someone said that uh, they don't own any gold. Hey, folks. You know, <laughs> some one of the subscribers uh, emailed me last night and asked me if I felt bad that I missed this last $40 uh, in gold. Because, you know, we made 70. We bought it down there at 72. We got out of it at roughly 40 to that 70 bucks. Folks, I leave so much money on the table. It's amazing. I leave more on than I take off. But that's the hardest thing in the world. Remember those four things, you know, a, a fear of leaving money on the table. Please get rid of that fear, folks. That is that is that's the silliest one of all the four fears, because the only way you don't leave money on the table as if you get the low tick or the high tick, and that doesn't happen very often. Uh, so just keep in mind that that's it. It's uh, you remember the old what Grandma used to say: you, when you get out into that swamp, you got to kiss a few frogs before you find a princess. So remember to do that. But the euro has held up relatively well. We ran into a little resistance up here today, up at this 113 level. But frankly, it came out of here like a rocket. Uh, a lot of lot of lot of support down there at 11180. Yeah, 11180 and 11080 that we talked about, and the dollar index doing exactly the same thing. We broke him below that key support. You'll see what it did today or yesterday. It's already reversed and came back below that. So that's telling you that the, uh, the, the situation has changed a little bit. Now, I'm sure it's all related to what the Federal Reserve is doing, but I'm just looking at the bar charts, folks. That's all I can tell you. Uh, I will keep reporting on this open interest because uh, if it is different this time, it's time for old Larry and the old Walter the Burrow to head out into the desert because if they don't keep track of the buyers and sellers, they're going to be the same fellers, and that, that isn't going to be good. That means someone's in there manipulating, and that's not the way these markets operate. I know the Federal Reserve can 
do a lot of things, but they can't do it for, you know, forever. I mean, you know, I, I know they keep dumping this stuff in here, and I know we've gone to, you know, $22 trillion or $98 trillion, whatever it happens to be, but someday, and I don't know if it'll be in my lifetime or not, uh, Popper is going to be there to pay the price. So we'll have to, you know, just do one thing at a time. Uh, one of the questions someone's popped up here is about the uh, the books on psychology that I looked at, folks. I started doing that back when I was in uh, school there in Terre Haute, Indiana. Uh, we had a guest come in. Uh, well, I, this is when I was doing my master's degree at IU. Uh, and we had a guest come in named uh, uh, <laughs> W. Clement Stone, who was a partner with uh, Napoleon Hill, who wrote the book. Of course, uh, that everybody knows, and what we, I, I was fortunate enough. These guys were so nice. They invited us college students to come up to Chicago and visit them, and I, I know they did that with tongue in cheek. But a week later, we were there. Four of us drove up there. We went into the Combined Insurance Company there on um, Michigan Avenue. And we walked in totally unannounced, and he was so gracious to us. Think and Grow Rich at W. Clement Stone. Yeah, Combined Insurance, and uh, they. They had us to lunch in the executive dining room and stuff, and uh, I had a signed copy of Think and Grow Rich that I still have. But uh, that book changed my life, folks, because uh, that really got me thinking about things. And then, and then later, back in 1985, I met uh, Anthony Robbins when he was just getting started and was introduced to neurolinguistic programming, and I did all that stuff with Walking on Fire. I walked on fire four or five times with him, and then I did it several times with uh, somebody else, Dr. Richard McCall, and that that's not a big deal. I mean, you'd think it is, but this is really hot stuff. I mean, these are hot coals, and you just literally, you know, walk uh, 20, 30 feet across it, and if you, if you do it right, you're not going to get hurt, but if you don't do it right, it burns, <laughs> and some people got burned. Anyway, let's. Uh, that's neither here nor there. I, I like the the work of uh, Anthony Robbins, uh, neurolinguistic programming. I keep it here on my little i, my little. I think it's called an iPad or whatever it is. It's a a little tiny thing about one square inch. It's got 1,100 albums on it. I don't even know what they call this thing, but it it's got all of them in there. And I listen to certain ones that I that I like to listen to, but uh, that helps me. Well, the way I start my day is basically from a few positive things that I got from uh, uh, Mark Douglas, really simple things. And uh, one is that, you know, I don't know what the hell is going to happen tomorrow or the next day, whatever. And I got to remember that. And so what I have to do is, uh, you know, to try to get in and, uh, you know, do the best I can and, you know, not uh, do not risk very much, you know, and that's it. You know, you, you just got to you know, pick your pick your best spots. And sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. And you're going to miss a lot of them. And that's the uh, that's the main thing. If you didn't miss a lot of them, this would be a, a big different story. So, that's it. I I will I will share with you the things that Tom and his uh, friend are doing because they're they're more happy to do that. Yes, uh, Zig Ziglar was really good. He was a sales. This was a sales one. Zig Ziglar is. I did him and Tony Hopkins. I did all those things. You know, back in the 60s and 70s, and because uh, I was really interested in the mental part of that, it was uh, it was really quite uh, quite a lot of fun. But then I got into buying silver, and boy, that was really easy. Shucks, how do you do that? You just buy silver, it goes up four times, and you sell it and make a lot of money, and you're dumber than a a warthog in a pen. But uh, got lucky. That's basically I've been lucky my whole life. So. That's uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, one other question someone's asked, and that is about the silver. Folks, the silver has uh, not quite made the ABCD love uh, level up there. Uh, that comes in at around 1550. We got up to 1541, backed off just a tiny bit. There's a beautiful ABCD pattern there that I'll probably post on the show tomorrow. And tomorrow, boys and girls, and tomorrow, boys and girls, don't miss the show because we are going to have – Mr. Cycles himself, Cycles Research, Bill Meridian. He is in New York City, the Big Apple, and he's going to be on at 9.30 tomorrow, giving us his chat on what gold is going to do. And if you remember, the last time he was on, about a month ago, he said, watch the yellow metal. Watch the yellow metal. He said, it's going to go higher. Luck is where preparation meets opportunity. That's one. And luck is where inspiration meets perspiration. 
I think those are some of the ones that I remember from those books. But, uh, yep, hard work is tough. And that's why trading is tough because people just don't take responsibility. They don't want to do the hard work. My favorite quote is from Twentyman, defy human nature. Do the work yourself. And that's why Tom Hugard said, I don't mind sharing anything we have because no one's going to do anything. They're going to do anything with it. They're too lazy, they're too lazy to, to go in and do it and prove it to themselves. Until you prove it to yourselves, folks, it don't mean diddly squat. You know, hello. Eh, eh, eh. Judge is ruling. You know, that's it. You got to do it yourself. And that's the way it is from here at TFNN, here at uh, in St. Petersburg, Florida, in Suite 618. Oh, the Suite 618 was in uh, Clearwater. I always liked that. Suite 618. That was pretty cool. By the way, um, yesterday, boys and girls, was my would have been my father's 100th birthday. Of course, he died 40 years ago, but... Uh, uh, it would have been his 100th birthday. He was one of the smartest people I met, uh, but never had, never went past the fifth grade. But, boy, he sure was smart. He could speak four or five languages and could do calculus, whatever, whatever. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, we're back, and I wanted to 
give you a good story here. One of my very dearest friends was Jay Cross, who worked for Commodity Corporation and Amos Hostetter after he got his degree in computer science from USC. Good old Memphis boy, and uh, we were really close for many years. He died uh, many years ago, 1995. Uh, we buried him on this day in 1995. But one of my favorite stories, we were at McCulloch Oil Building. It was early in the morning, and we had been over at ships for breakfast, and we were just coming across. It was around 7 o'clock in the morning, and there was a car, one of these little tiny Hondas. When they, These were smaller than the, uh, this was 72, 73. These were smaller than the little Mini Coopers, you know. So this young girl was stuck there and uh you know it was blocking traffic and everything and so a couple of us went over and we we moved the car out of the way and she worked in the mcculloch oil building for one of the attorneys and so after we moved the car and everything uh, we were walking upstairs with her and she got on the elevator and just started to cry and you know she was telling us how everything had gone wrong you know her ex-husband was not paying and now the car had broken down and he, she didn't know what to do and so she went on to her office and Jay says come on and I says where where are we going he said I ah, don't worry about it I'll tell you so we hopped in uh, hopped in his, his brand new Mercedes and we went over to uh, uh, Century City and there was a Honda new Honda sh dealership right off of uh, of uh, a Pico Boulevard, and he went in and he bought a brand new Honda, 1973. He paid uh, $1,995 for it, and he told the guy to deliver it to the McCulloch Oil Building and take the keys up to uh, 18th floor and give them to her, and uh, that was it. He never told her who he was or anything like that. And uh, what happened was the attorney came into the McCulloch Oil offices uh, later around well, 1 o'clock in the afternoon and, and was saying, "Who? what's going on here? What are you people doing? And, uh, of course, Roy was the office manager, and he just laughed. He said, look, give her the card, forget it. You know, that's basically what it was. That's just the kind of guy he was. He was just he had a heart of gold, and uh, I try to learn from that. I, can't, I, can't, I don't give $2,000 cars away, but I do, you know, what I can. Anyway, folks, take a look here at the possibility of short crude today. Uh, Bill Meridian's giving me a heads up on that today, so keep an eye on that. 877-927-6648. Thank you.